Well, what's up, guys? I'm Travis, and you're watching Upgraded RC. Welcome everyone. In this short video, we're going to be discussing the differences between running a single battery, two batteries, or three batteries, as well as should you run them batteries in a parallel circuit or in a series circuit. What is the difference? What are the pros and cons? And what is best for you? We're going to discuss all that in this video and then some. And guys, please pay attention and watch to the very end of this video. I'm going to say a lot of important things that are going to keep you from damaging your electronics or possibly catching them on fire, maybe catching your whole house on fire. <laughs> Stay tuned. So why should this be a big concern to you? Let's say you just went and got a new RC and you got the correct battery with the correct voltage. It's all charged up and ready to go. Can I go ahead and just plug into the single ESC lead here and run it. Sure you can. That's probably the easiest way and the best way to avoid damage. So then why do I want two batteries? Well, like on this particular truck, we have two battery trays here, one on the left and one on the right. So if I put a battery in each side, now we're balancing the truck out, giving us greater performance on climbing and crawling and some of the corners. If you just have a battery on one side, it's going to weigh down to that side and not the other. So it kind of hinders you a little bit. The other benefit to having two batteries is extended runtime. If you're running two batteries on a parallel circuit, then you can go ahead and double your runtime. Say you have a 5,000 milliamp on this side and another 5,000 milliamp on this side. Now you're running 10,000 milliamps, giving you longer runtime for them, longer hikes or trail runs, whatever you want to do. Okay, so what about a third battery? Now the reason why I was saying that you could use a third battery as well is if you're running a larger servo, say I'm going to be running one here that's fifth scale, that's putting out 2,000 ounces of torque, I don't want that to draw away from the batteries I'm using to run the ESC and the motor and the lights and the winch and whatever else I got. So I'm going to use a third battery to run just the servo. And guys, you could run like, say you can run, I'm going to run a 4S1750 milliamp, a small little shorty pack I'm going to put back here in the cargo area that I've got. That's going to just run my servo. I can probably get about two or three hours out of that battery, which is going to exceed the two battery packs I've gotten here for the ESC and the motor. So it just makes it easier that way. You want to be able to do all this without overvolting anything. You don't want any damage to anything. Make sure that you guys know what your input voltages are for your servo, your ESC, and your receiver so you're not overvolting them. That is the quickest way to catch something on fire, guys. So make sure you know that. Let me give you some examples here. I've got a couple servos that show the input voltage on the back. I'm going to show you. So here's a Reef's RAW 500 servo and it's listing all the specifications on the back. Right here it says voltage 4.8 to 8.4 being the max voltage input for this servo. Now let me pull another one out here. This is my fifth scale servo that is going to be running 2,000 ounces. And if you notice right here at the very top it says operating voltage 7.4 to 16.8. So there's a difference there and your ESCs are going to do the same thing. Look at the back of the box and make sure you know what the input voltage is so you're not overvolting anything. Now guys, for demonstrative purposes, I'm going to be doing examples with different batteries with different voltages. Now this is relative to me and this vehicle in particular. It may not be relative to you. I have no idea what you're doing. That's why I'm telling you, check your input voltage. It's very important. All right. I would also like to point out that you guys should keep all of your LiPo batteries in a LiPo safe bag. Now, I never really thought too much about these when I first started out in RC, but recently I have. We had a battery blow up. Now this was on my wife's weed eater. She went ahead and charged it up. We took it off the charger and I set it on the bench for about an hour, no big deal. And then she came in to grab it and she was throwing it back in the box that it came in for storage. She was gonna put it on the shelf. Well, as soon as she threw it in that box, I heard this loud noise and I, I thought a pitcher fell off the wall or something, but it was actually the battery blowing up one of the cells. Again. So she's yelling for me. I go in the other room and here's this box on fire. I grabbed it. I should have thought about it, but I just grabbed it and took it outside and threw it in the gravel. And I mean, it continued to burn for about 10 minutes. 
Now, every two minutes, another cell would blow up. I thought it was over with, and all of a sudden, boom, a cell would go. We'd wait two or three more minutes, boom, another cell would go. So it's kind of dangerous, and it can burn down your entire house or your RC or your truck that your RC is stored in or whatever. So I really am a big fan now of these LiPo bags, guys. They're cheap. They're like 11 to 19 bucks. I've got six of them now to hold all my LiPos. Do it, okay? Very important there. Now for the example I'm about to do here, we're going to target 4S or 14.8 volts. I've got four of the exact same batteries here. They're all 2S 7.4 volt, 8,000 milliamp, 120 C. So if I take all four of these, which are exactly the same, and set them side by side here. So in this example, the two ends of the connectors here are going to represent going to your ESC. And then you've got the connector here and here, which supplies your battery, and also here and here. Now, this is a parallel hookup because it has a negative and a positive lead on each side for each battery. When you are using this hookup, your ESC recognizes both of these batteries as only being 2S and 7.4 volts. When you go to the series, you only have one positive wire here with two negative leads so that when you're hooking this up, your ESC now recognizes both of these 2S batteries as being one 4S and 14.8 volts instead of 7.4. So now we have created the 4S target that we're looking for, the maximum voltage we can put in by using two 2S batteries. Now, when you do this, your milliamps, the 8,000 milliamps we have here on each one, even though we have two batteries, you're still only going to get 8,000 milliamps. And the 120 C here is a constant that's not going to change. If we go over here to the parallel side and we hook it up, like I said, the ESC is going to recognize it as two separate 2S batteries, but the 8,000 milliamps we have here on H1, now it has doubled because it's recognizing two separate batteries. So now you have 16,000 milliamps of runtime. That's a lot longer. And once again, the 120 C, the displacement here is a constant that does not change. So let's say you wanna mix it up a little bit. You wanna go with a bigger battery. Let's go ahead and go with two 3S batteries here. Can we do that in a parallel setup with our target being 4S? Yes, we can, because 2 3S is still 3S, which is less than our 4S target. And yes, you are multiplying your milliamp hours by doing this from 5200, which we see here, to 10,400. Now, can we do that on a series hookup? No, we cannot. Now you're taking these two 3S batteries and multiplying them, so you're getting 6S, which exceeds our 4S target. So you do not want to do that. That's a really quick way to set you up for seeing smoke or damaging your electronics. Now with that being said guys, I shouldn't have to tell you, but you can run two 4S batteries on your parallel circuit, and that's probably going to give you the most power and the most runtime if you're targeting 4S. Now you cannot run two 4S batteries on your series circuit because why? It's going to make it 8S. Okay, now let me show you guys, there's a certain sequence to hooking these up also, so you don't get that smoke show. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So guys, I'm assuming you're just like me, and you're going to go ahead and whichever setup you're running here, you're going to leave this connector connected to the ESC all the time, unless you're changing it out for benefits, right? So all you really want to do is plug in your batteries and go. Well, with the parallel setup, you can do exactly that. You can plug in your left battery, your right battery. It doesn't really matter which one you plug in first. Now, if we go over here to the series setup, this is different, guys. This is kind of like a real car. You really want to set up and plug in your negative first. If your ESC is plugged into this connector, make sure you plug in the black wires first. Okay, these two black wires here go to this connector. This is your negative side. This is your positive side. Just picture plugging in this positive side last as being your key or the part that initiates and activates your rig. So that is very important, guys. Plug in your negative side first, always, or you could see that smoke show you don't want to see. Now let's go ahead and talk about the servos. 
So we've got a larger one-fifth scale servo here that is putting out 2,000 ounces of torque. So this is drawing quite a bit. Now, if we go back over here to our parallel side and hook up our batteries, we can go ahead and take and hook this servo up to either battery. See, we've got these connectors on the end here. This one right here is your JST connector and it goes directly to your receiver. Then you've got this other connector here, which is for your balance lead. So you plug this into your receiver and now you take this balance lead and you can plug it into either battery you want to. The left or the right, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna power your servo and get you through it. Now, if we move over here to the series setup, now it's very important again. Now we wanna go ahead and take our connectors and we'll plug the JST back into the receiver like we talked about, but our balance lead here, it's very, very important to avoid that smoke show. We're gonna to wanna to plug in our balance lead to the battery on the left side. So everything is plugged into the left side and the left side is plugged in first. That will avoid any damage whatsoever. All right, guys, with everything that we've said here today, the best setup for me, because I'm targeting 4S and I want the most amount of power available for my servo and I want the most amount of power available for my motor and ESC with extended run times. What am I gonna do? We're going to avoid the series hookup. We're going with the parallel hookup and three batteries. Okay, I do not have a 4S shorty. I'm sorry, this is a battery tester. This is going to represent my 4S shorty back here. I've got one on order. Anyway, so we're gonna hook up both of our batteries to the parallel leads here, and we're gonna run our maximum voltage, which is a 4S and a 4S, because we can do that. Then we're gonna look for high milliamps here. Let's just say we're running 8,000 and 8,000. So now we got our 16,000 milliamps of runtime. And then we go ahead and hook this servo directly up to our 4S shorty in the back. Now the servo is not robbing power from the motor of the ESC. The ESC and the motor are not robbing power from the servo. That is the best setup we can possibly get if we're targeting 4S and want extended run times and we want to be balanced. Well, that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. I love making these videos for you guys and passing on a little bit of knowledge that I have on certain subjects, especially all you newbies to the RC world. I really hope that you learned something here and I prevented you from doing damage to your electronics or possibly burning up your house or your car, who knows? I mean, this is just general knowledge from me to you. Guys, it is a beautiful day here. I think I'm going to get out there. I'm going to run some of this around and go tear it up a little bit and have a good time. It's my weekend, so before I got to go back to work, we're going to go have some fun. I think you guys should do the same thing. Go bash, go crash, go crawl, go do whatever it is that makes you happy. Because that's the key to life right there, guys. Until the next video, I'm Travis. You're watching Upgraded RC. Peace out.